Unlike recessive alleles, having two copies of every gene does not protect you from a dominant allele. As we learned in lesson five, having one copy of a dominant allele is enough to cause a phenotype. Now in the case of dwarfism, the most common cause is a dominant allele that causes achondroplasia, which is inhibition in bone growth. Achondroplasia is one of the most common causes of dwarfism. So this is what normal bone growth looks like. If we take a long bone from your body, the end of it has a particular kind of cell, here I'm outlining it in red, that actually grows and divides, and then it comes into the long bone part of the bone and provides the material that grows the bone longer over time. Now those red cells are red, indicating that they have a particular important protein called FGFR3. It stands for fibroblast growth factor receptor three, and we'll learn a bit more about it in a moment, but we'll just call it FGFR3 for now. And as these FGFR3 positive cells grow and divide, then they become the cells that are part of the, the physical substance of the long bone itself. So the way the bone grows itself essentially is these FGFR3 positive cells grow and divide into more cells and that's how the bone gets longer. Now, how do bones end up a certain length and they're not shorter or longer? Well, it turns out that this protein, FGFR3, is really important in regulating this process. In fact, signaling through FGFR3 in a cell keeps the bone from growing too long. An active FGFR3 protein prevents bones from growing even longer. But some mutations in the FGFR3 gene results in a protein that's overactive and it actually stunts the growth of bones even more so that they can't grow as long even as they normally would. So let's learn a bit more about this FGFR3 protein. The FGFR3 gene can be found on chromosome four in the human genome. Chromosome four has 186 million base pairs in it and the FGFR3 protein can be found near the end. The FGFR3 gene itself consists of 17 exons spanning over 15,000 base pairs. After transcription and splicing, the resulting mRNA has 2,421 nucleotides of coding region. And after translation, we'll have a protein with 806 amino acids. Remember, we just divided 2,421 by three and then subtracted one from the overall answer because the last codon is a stop codon, which doesn't code for an amino acid, it's just empty. Now let's actually look at one allele of this gene that's associated with the chondroplasia. One allele of the FGFR3 gene contains a G to A, a guanine to adenine mutation at position 1138 of the coding region. Now using the genetic code, which we learned about in lesson three, and you can find posted in the instructor's notes on this page, I want you to determine the change expected in the amino acid sequence here, and then select the type of mutation best used to describe this A allele from the list below. Now, if you have trouble answering this, you wanna go back and review mutations from lesson six.